Ezra's Hashem is Baruch. Welcome everyone. We are ready to continue after a long break of Pesach. Um, Amarayim, we learned last time the Tanoim and the Seder of the Tanoim. Hey, Shag, Shag, Shai. And we got through all the Nesim, Hillel, and about uh, 10 generations, close to it, of um, eight generations of Nesim coming from Hillel straight to Rabbein HaKadosh. Rabbein HaKadosh wrote the Mishnayis. Also, Hillel in Talmidim who taught Rabbi Yechem ben Zakkai, who taught Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Yeshua, who taught Rabbi Akiva, who taught the five Talmidim, Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Yesi, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Meir, and who taught Rabbi HaKadosh, and Rabbi HaKadosh wrote the Mishnayis, and Rabbi HaKadosh wrote the Mishnayis in the north of Eretz Yisrael, and that is Chasimus HaMishnayis, and that is the Mishnayis that we have. He left out deliberately Brises, things which are outside the Mishnayis, and those are Brises. Um, the Brises were collected by Rebchia and Rebbeishia. Rebchia and Rebbeishia were, Rebchia lived really in the times of Rabbi HaKadosh, and a little after, the Gemara is like, not even sure, maybe Rebchia was nifted before. The Gemara comes out that Rebchia was nifted afterwards, and Rebbeishia, and this is all in Eretz Yisrael. And then there was that middle dar. The dar, the first dar of Amaroyim, is almost like Tanu Upolig, Rabchia Tanu Upolig, the Moran Bobmetsia says, sometimes Rav Tanu Upolig, Rabbi Yechenon, it's, it's a little tricky, this one dar living in Eretz Yisrael, Rabbi Shua Ben Levi, Bar Kapara, and all these people living in Eretz Yisrael in the times of Rabbi, they saw Rabbi, they learned with Rabbi, and therefore that's the first dar of the Amaroyim. And now, really, there's a split. There's a split between Eretz Yisrael and Bobo. So we have Eretz Yisrael. And we have Bogel. So again, we're talking about after the first dar. We have the first dar is in Eretz Yisrael. <coughs> and then, which we're not going to discuss first, comes Rav. The Tanoim were primarily in Eretz Yisrael? We're ta- primarily in Eretz Yisrael, although they were still in Bogel. They were already in Bogel from, from the times of Yechonia. Yechonia had... Um, Yechonia had... Uh, Gol Shechonia. Al Naris Bovel, Shem Yeshavan Gam Bachinu, in Bovel, the, they still had Yenebe Smedrish in Ardoi, uh, right? The Shafi Yasef in Ardoi over there. They had Yenebe Smedrish at Rotsu Avanes, Rotsu Avadecha, Es Avaneho, and therefore they took along the Be Smedrish from Eretz Yisrael and they brought it to Bovel in Ardoi, and that's where they settled. And it was during the whole second base Amidash they were in Nardoi, they were in Bovel. And the, the mission, mission Rosh Hashanah says, "Acher ro is kol agoyla kim duras eish and pumbedisa." And that was they, they were still they were still there. They were always in Babel. but the the main place was in Eretz Yisrael. And Rav went to Babel. The Gemara says, "Oh, mechi all the Rav went Babel." When Rav went to Babel, that's it. The things changed, and Babel started to become the center besides for Eretz Yisrael, which again we're dealing with now about 150 years after the Chorban. So the Chorban Beis Amidosh happened already. And after the Chorban Beis Amidosh, Eretz Yisrael was still, has still the primacy, was still Eretz Yisrael, until Rav went to Bavel, and as Reb Chia said, Elikim Haven Darko, HaKadosh Baruch who knew what he was doing, that to send them to Bavel because Eretz Yisrael eventually is going to deteriorate and they're not going to be able to remain in Eretz Yisrael. And by that time, already Bavel is planted, is rooted, is is totally settled and ready to to become the center of Torah. So therefore, we have Rav goes to Bava. But during that second generation, we have Rabbi Yechonon, and Rabbi Yechonon in Tveria is running the base medrash, and Rabbi Yechonon's yeshiva in Tveria is the center of Eretz Yisrael, and that is the center of Torah. And we really have to appreciate who Rabbi Yechonon was. Rabbi Yechonon was someone. <laughs> that learned by Rebbe, he was a young Talmud in Rebbe, and he lived for a hundred years, if let's say roughly we're talking about in the calendar, um, I don't know the exact, the exact numbers, but if we talk about it in the calendar, we're talking about somewhere, lived somewhere between 200 and 300. Maybe he was born 175, uh, let's say, and died at, one, at 275, he lived about a hundred years, and he, in the year, let's say now it's 2023, so we're dealing with, um, a little, over, a little less than 2,000 years ago, was basically from the year, um, the late 2nd century till the late 3rd century was Rabbi Yechanan, and Rabbi Yechanan was in Eretz Yisrael, and Rabbi Yechanan, we know, had a brother-in-law, Mishlakish, and 
they had the center, they were the center of Eretz Yisrael, and everything came from Rabbi Yechon and Rishlachish. We should just appreciate that Rabbi Yechon, the Rambam holds that the Rabbi Yechon of Be'ikr wrote Talmud, Talmud Yerushalmi. Rabbi Yechon wrote Talmud Yerushalmi. That's already first generation the Gemara is already written. That means Rabbi Yechon learned even by Rabbi Noah Kaddish. There was a good generation in between of all those people we mentioned before, Rabbi Chir, Rabbi Yishia, of Rabbi Shua ben Levi were the t- were the first generation of Marayim, and then comes Rabbi Yechonon, and Rabbi Yechonon's already writing down all the conversations, and he's already writing down Talmud Yerushalmi. Although Talmud Yerushalmi, just like Talmud Babli, goes through the Rabbanon Savroi that edited it, so therefore we still have another few, another fifty years of them fixing up Talmud Yerushalmi, adding to it that's still added, but. The Rambam calls Rabbi Yechon was the one who was Mechaber Talmud Yerushalmi, Rabbi Yechonon and Rishlachish. We should just appreciate that Rabbi Yechonon, there's like steers of Rabbi Yechonon. Rabbi Yechonon was, was the most handsome person. And he had these huge eyelids that, right, we know the story that with Rav Kahano, Ari Olami Bava, Rav Kahano um, killed a guy who was starting up with Rav, and therefore he did epis and uh, he was dead. And then already it was scary, he couldn't, we have to get to we have to get to what was going on in Bavel then. But then already the Bavel. When the Chavroi came to Bavel, it wasn't so simple, and therefore Rav Kahana had to leave. And Rav Kahana goes to Eretz Yisrael, and the Rishlakish tells him, "Are you Bavel? You have to be careful." The lion, Rav Kahana, just came up from Bavel, and Rav Kahana is very powerful, right? Rav told him before he comes, don't ask anything for seven. The Gemara Mbav will come over there, Kufi Zayin, don't say anything for seven years, and he says, I'm not going to say anything for seven years, and therefore, he put him back seven, seven rows, and then he came up. I'm, I'm sure we're familiar with the story, the whole story, and therefore, Rav Kahano had a split lip, and Rav Yechon couldn't see him, and finally said, I want to see this Rav Kahano, who, who outsmarted me in, in halacha so much, and he had to pick up his eyelids, and so Rav Yechon was this, person that was very, very big, right? The Gemara says that a cow could walk under him if he stood next to him, a cow could fit under him. And he was extremely handsome. He would sit al Sha'ari Tvilo so that the Nashim could, could be mistakal. And he was extremely, extremely handsome. And Rish Lakish, who was the head bandit, saw him and said, wow, Shufra Chlanashi, like, you know, uh, your beauty is incredible. And he said, Chelech Le'eraisa, your strength, Rish Lakish, your strength, Rish Lakish, belongs to the Torah. And therefore, Rabbi Yechon Rish Lakish became extremely close. During this time, also, we always have to remember is Rebbe Lozer ben Pedas, who was Mara the Arad Yisrael, who was the Mara the Arad Yisrael, which the Gemara always points out that we have Rebbe Elazar and we have Rebbe Elazar. We have Rebbe Elazar ben Shamua that we learned was a Talmud of Rebbe Akiva. Rebbe Elazar ben Shamua is a Talmud of Rebbe Akiva. He was one of the Asar Ruge Malchus. And then we have Rebbe Elazar ben Pedas, the Amoira, who was a second generation Amoira in Eretz Yisrael with Rebbe Yechanan. And it was very, very powerful who Rabbi Yechonon was. Another, another interesting thing about Rabbi Yechonon, Rabbi Yechonon bridged, he lived from the times of Rebbe, Mamish till, till, till almost uh, two, three generations Rabbi Yechonon lived, and it's incredible how Rabbi Yechonon carried everything, and Rabbi Yechonon is really Yerushalmi. But he's mentioned in Bavli, Almost as many times, I have no idea, I don't know the count, he's mentioned, I'm not saying like that, by Amravo. You can hardly go by a blood or two that you don't have a Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yechanan very shlaki, she was Rabbi Yechanan. And Rabbi Yechanan was very, very close to Rishlakish, and we know that he said a sharp line to Rishlakish, and, and Rishlakish felt felt uh, hurt by that, and Rishlakish eventually was nifter, and Rabbi Yechanan could not live without, uh, well, uh, Tachnun, no, yeah, yeah, and Rabbi Yechonon couldn't, he's saying we're starting now, and Rabbi Yechonon couldn't live without Rish Lakish, so then Rabbi Lozab and Pedas stood him for Rish Lakish, Rabbi Yechonon said, you can't compare uh, Rabbi Lozab and Pedas to Rish Lakish, and Rabbi Yechonon finally was, was Yotzami Daitoi, and they had to doubt that Rabbi Yechonon should be Nifter, and Rabbi Yechonon was Nifter, Rabbi Yechonon has many Talmidim, and these Talmidim are the Talmidim that we are familiar with, of Ki Asa, the ones who were always coming back from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel. Who's always coming back from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel? Can you hear some names? Ki Asa uh, Rav Dimi. Ki Asa Rav Asi. Ki Asa Rav Ami. Ki Asa Rav Zero. Ki Asa Rav Bar Bar Chano. Bar Bar Chano. Um, Ki Asa Rav Yermia. 
All these key also, Rishlok Rabbi Yechanan is not stam just a Marda Ardi, is not only the Rashiva of of Eretzol, but all his Torah was always going to Babel. Now Babel was the center of Torah. Babel is taking over Eretzol. Babel is the place. But still Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan is, is, is the man in charge. Rabbi Yechanan is all through Shal's Babli. We're almost surprised to know that Rabbi Yechanan is not even a Babli. Rabbi Yechanan is Yerushalmi. Rabbi Yechanan is the one in Eretzol. But he's all throughout the Gemara. Ki also, ki also Rav Dima, Amar Rabbi Yechanan. Ki also Rabbi Yemiya, Amar Rabbi Yechanan. Ki also Amar Rabbi Yechanan. So now in Eretz Yisrael we have other people besides Rabbi Yechen and there was Rabbi Yenison who had a Talmud, Rabbi Shmuel Bar Achmeni, and they were the, the king of Avagarta, right? Amar Rabbi Shmuel Bar Achmeni, Amar Rabbi Yenison, and there was Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha with Rabbi Amir Rav Asi, and then we have we have Rabbi Yechen and we have we have all these Amaraim. It's interesting that that many Tanoim, many Amaraim of, of Babel, their Kvur is up there in the north of Eretz Yisrael, and, and they were brought over. They were brought over. And the Gemara in the end of, of Maid Cotton discusses about how they would bring over the Mason, the Amaroyim, and bury them in Eretz Yisrael. But that was more or less third generation Amaroyim, and maybe even fourth generation Amaroyim, is still the, is still Rabbi Yechenon's Talmidim. Still Rabbi Yechenon's there teaching um, Reb Zeir, Reb Zeir is Reb Yemiah's Rebbe. Just to highlight Reb Zeir and Reb Yemiah, we know Reb Zeir was very, very, very straight. Right? He held somebody cannot um, fill his mouth with um, happiness in this world. And he was, he was very serious, Reb Zeir. We should always remember Reb Zeir. Reb Zeir is very serious. Gavr Katina, the the short man with the burnt head, because he was, he was, he would test himself. He said, if the fire of Gehenna is 60 times the fire of, of Olam Hazeh, so he held that Gehenna can't be Charlotte on him. If Gehenna can't work on him, so the fire in Olam Hazeh is only 1 60th of Gehenna, for sure the fire in Olam Hazeh can't. So therefore, once every 30 days, he would sit down in the fireplace and he would see that the fire doesn't, is not Charlotte on him, and he would know that if the fire is not Charlotte on him, hopefully the fire of Gehenna should not be Charlotte on him. And one time he was sitting there and somebody walked in and he was not Machavan. He lost his concentration, and therefore he came running out of the fireplace. On the fire caught caught him, and therefore he was Gavar Katina, the short man, the Charach Resha, with the burnt head, and that was Reb Zera, very serious, very, very, very tight, and he had a and he had a Talmud, Rabbi Yirmiyah. We know Rabbi Yirmiyah all of a shas boy Rabbi Yirmiyah, Rabbi Yirmiyah as a kasha. Rabbi Yirmiyah's kashas are always going not always will many times end up in a teku. These complicated. Questions of have you Rabbi Yirmiyah or Abzeir or Ledeki Chach Vagach or Legach? You know, if the all this complicated question, Rabbi Yirmiyah um, tried to bring Rabbi Zeir to smile, to laugh. He did chuckle. He didn't chuckle. A school right and Afkum a base measure. They threw him out of base measure. Rabbi Yirmiyah. So you have the tight Rebbe with the very exciting. Um, Talmud Rabbi with the complicated Geshmaka lining up the whole base measures was Rabbi Yirmiyah or Abzeir. Again, this is more second. Um, Rabbi Yechonon, let's say, second generation Amaraim, this third generation Amaraim, fourth generation Amaraim, and then it more or less comes to an end. And this is very important, just to appreciate. Rabbi Nakadish died. Before Rabbi Rabbein Nakadish died, he said, Lebanai um, Anitzarach. He said, Lechacham Anitzarach. He called them different people. He said, Lebanai Anitzarach. I need my children. And he said, Shim and Beni Chacham Gamli Beni Nasi. So we have Rabbi Nakadish. Make another column. We have Rabbeinu Hakadosh, Rebbe. Rebbe had a son, Rabbi Gamliel, which in Masechet Sofos and Perkei Avos in last week's parak, the second mission in the second parak says Rabbi Gamliel ben Noish or Rabbi Yudah Nasi Aimer, right? And the Mamish goes over there. Who was Rebbe's father? Rabbi Nakadish's father was Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. That was the end of Parak Aleph. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel's father is Rabbi Gamliel the Yavne. And therefore, he has Rabbi Nakodesh as a son of Rabbi Gamliel. Rabbi Gamliel did not live long. Maybe two years he was the Nasi, and he was the Nasi for maybe two years. And then his son, Rabbi Yehuda Nesia, took over. We call him Rabbi Yehuda Nesia because we didn't want to confuse him with Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi. So we call him Rabbi Yehuda Nesia. And Rabbi Yehuda Nesia lived a long time, and he led the Klai Yisrael, the Yishuv, in Eretz Yisrael. Rabbi Yehuda Nesia. So after Rabbi Gamliel, we have. Reb Yehuda Nesia. Reb Yehuda Nesia 
died and he had a son, Reb Gamliel, again, who had Reb Yehuda Nesia the second. And therefore, there was Reb Gamliel, the son of Reb Yehuda Nesiah. Reb Yehuda Nesiah. Reb Gamliel, Reb Yehuda Nesiah. And then came the last Nasi ever, and that was Hillel. Hillel Hashemi. And we have to appreciate what was going on in the Roman world during that time. Rabbi Nakadosh had a very close friendship with Antoninus. Antoninus was a nice person, and Antoninus loved Rabbi, and Antoninus stopped the way the Romans feared, the way the Romans led the country. The Romans appointed an heir, and that person did it. It wasn't his son. And Antoninus decided that he wants his son to lead, and the Gemara of the Tafiyur on the bottom, talks about how Antoninus discussed with Rabbi Nakadish, how could I get my son to be the next emperor? And he made his son into an emperor, and it lost the power of the emperor. Not necessarily was his son the best emperor, and not necessarily should his son be the emperor. And from there, the Roman, the Roman started, the, the Roman iron clad hold that they had on the people started to unravel. And from this point, they started to unravel. Suddenly, another faction that was living then was coming more dominant, and that was the Christian factor. So we have the Christians, as we learned. The Christians, very possible, was already from the times of the Zugas, Rabbi Yeshua ben Parachio, like Rabbi Yeshua ben Parachio, Shadocha Fai Liyeshu Mishnei Yadayim. And that more or less comes, uh, I'm saying it comes out with Rabbi Shur ben Prachi, it works out very good, that, he, <coughs> that this Yeshu died somewhere near the year, year zero, it, it does work out. And we're dealing with now, let's say, 300 years later. And 300 years later, we have the Yidin and Eretz Yisrael, and the Christians are, 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 are making trouble. And the Romans hated the Christians, and they refused to let them be part of it. And they held them down. But as long as the Romans were strong, the Christians were quiet. And as bad as the Romans were, the Christians were worse. Were worse. And as long as the Romans had the Christians um, subdued, the Yidin were able to remain. A, a terrible uh, marshal. But the Cossacks uh, were terrible. And the Tsar in Russia, and all these mices we have for hundreds of years of the Yidin in Russia living under the Tsar and all that, was terrible, but they made it through. And then came the communists, done. Russian Jewry was finished. It was impossible. Maybe a, maybe a marshal. While the Romans were there, it was terrible. Persecutions, it was better, it was worse. Going up, going down, all this. But they made it through. They were able to be there. Once it came, the Christians, it was over. And finally came um, the, the Christian, the, the, the Roman themselves had big problems. The Rome, we have, we, you know, Roman, we're talking about in there, it's Rome. Rome. Rome is really in Europe. This is, you know, uh, a far east of Rome. They, they, they were so big, they were all the way to the east, they were past Eretz Israel, they were busy fighting with Parthia, trying to take over the Persians. They got them, they didn't get Persians, they didn't get Persians back and forth. But they were baker in Italy, they were baker in, 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 in Europe, and here they are there. So eventually, it was just two different cultures, two different worlds, the Asians and the Europeans. And finally, Rome itself had to divide in half, and the eastern part of Rome was co called the Byzantines, and they were the Byzantines, Ro um, Romans, who more or less were, was focused on in constant, con Constantinople, and it was started by, he's the one who made the, the, the divide, was Constantine, and he named Constantinople after himself, and now suddenly the head of the Roman, um, the head of the Roman Emperor was now in Turkey, right next to where it's rose. So suddenly they were much more, instead of having Rome over there, suddenly Rome was right here, and the Christians were very stark over here. The Christians were, were taking over the whole entire thing, and Constantine also allowed um, the Christians to have certain um, rights, and suddenly it, started, it started to become the Roman Catholic Church. From the Romans fighting, fighting, fighting the Christians, it became, it, 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 they took over Rome. They took over Rome, and now it was impossible. And then they, start, they made edicts, and one after the next, that it was impossible literally for Yidden to remain in Eretz Yisrael, and the Yidin could not remain anymore in Eretz Yisrael. Now that you can't have Yidin in Eretz Yisrael, what difference does that make? Well, that made a very, very big difference for a few different things. 
Incredible. First of all, smicha. Smicha can only be done in Eretz Yisrael. If the yish of an Eretz Yisrael is no longer there, there's no longer smicha. So the Romans tried to abolish smicha. As long as the Yidim were there, you can't fight with the, with the Yiddish stubbornness. The Yidim would give smicha, and Rabbi Yudah ben Bavu was Mercy Nefesh. She was one of the Asura Malchus giving smicha to the five Talmudim of Rabbi Akiva. But smicha remained. With all the Gezeris the Romans did, smicha remained. Smicha could not be stopped. It was a unbroken chain all the way back to Moshe Rabbeinu. But once it comes the Romans, once it comes the Christians, they literally sent everyone out of there. So they made a thing. It had to be Judah It had to be free. Everyone had to get out of there. And they persecuted the Yidin until they literally left and they went to Bavel. And Smicha Memela died out. And now we don't have Smicha anymore because the Yidin are no longer in Eretz Yisrael. Another difference of now the Yidin are no longer in Eretz Yisrael <coughs> is, is Kiddush HaChadosh. We have to appreciate that. It's not only a question of when is Reish Chadosh. It's a question of that the whole month, the whole calendar doesn't start because if there's no to be Makadosh to Chadosh, so then, so then we wouldn't have Reish Chadosh. If we wouldn't have Reish Chadosh, so then every month is going to be 30 days. If every month is going to be 30 days, then Rish Chodesh is going to come to be when the month is whole. It's just not going to work. But oh, if we wouldn't have Rish Chodesh, it wouldn't have a bezin being Kaveya Rish Chodesh. We also don't have a bezin that's being Kaveya when is there an Ibriyar. So now we're going to end up having the seasons are going to be messed up. So therefore, there had to be something in Eretz Yisrael. So Eretz Yisrael always, Lemaisa, had the, the stolts of, of running Klai Yisrael. And even everyone in Eretz Yisrael, the Gemara Rosh Hashanah, Daf Yud, that Ula and all these times, they all had to know when was Rosh Chodesh in Eretz Yisrael. They may have had the, the, the upper hand in learning in Bavel, but at the end of the day, first of all, Smicha was only in Eretz Yisrael. And them and Bava was only Shlichu Sayu Kavdin and the Gemara in, in Nachevel says, we're only doing their Shlichas. Va'oid, we always have to know when did they decide to Shtel Rosh Chodesh and when did they decide to Shtel in Ibriya that changed the whole entire Mohos of, 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 of the calendar. And therefore, once a Mamish had to leave Eretz Yisrael, it was no, it was impossible to do it. And Hillel Hasheni decided that he's going to be Makadish, all the Rashi Chadashim, from now until Adbiyaz Goyal Tzedek, and he organized the calendar. And then he stood up and he said, I'll be Makadish Rish Chadish for Nisan Toshim Pei Gimel. I don't know exactly how he did it. He said it because, you know, uh, you know like when you take of Trumas and Mises, Masha Kost of Khan, I don't know exactly how he did it, but he set up a calendar, an unbelievable, unbelievable Yedea Mazos, Kihichach Maskam, Uvi Naskam, Leine Agoyim, to prove the, the, the Emma's kind of the Torah is to show that we could, we, we could Yedea Mazolis, we, we could know the, the whole constellations of, and, and for 2,000 years he's, he's still not off. For 2,000 years, he's maybe, I mean, he estimated he may be, he's less than three hours off on all the Rosh Hashanah. was an incredible, incredible genius. Even the, the, the Chacham for the next, I'm sorry, the, the, the astrologers, astronomers, for the next 1,500 years still cannot come to his, his realization. Only now, today, we realize how precise to divide the month into 29 days, 12 hours, and, and make a new thing of 793 over 1080 of an hour. So he, he got 793 halakim over an 80, so he, over 1080, so he divided an hour into 1080 and said 793 of them um, plus 29 days and a half, 29 days and 12 hours makes one month. And that is the amount of times it takes for the moon to go around. And therefore he was able to be Machashev the Cheshbrenes. And he was Makadosh. He set up the calendar. Hillel Hasheni is the one who did it. And then the Yishev and Eretz Yisrael was over. The Yishev and Eretz Yisrael was gone. That's it. That it was the, over. At the end of Yavne? No, Yavne is long gone. Yavne was... Yavne was yeah, how did Makadosh the Cheshbrenes interrupt years between time that the Sanhedrin ceased in Yavne and no, the, 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 the Sanhedrin was there in, in Tsipairi and the, 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 everything was up there in the north. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The Sanhedrin was always there. And, he, and he, it, it had rough times. It was there, it wasn't there, and uh, however they had to sneak in to be Makadosh Chodesh, however, however it was. But after this, it was done. After this, it was done, and Hillel Hasheni was Makadosh Chodesh for then, and it was an unbelievable Messiah Snefesh that he, he realized that th there's, no, there's no future to it. 
And besides anything else, you have Hillel Hashemi is a ben achar, ben achar, ben achar, ben all the way from Hillel, it goes, must go 10, 15 generations. Hey, Shag, Shag, Shai, uh, Shimon, be, Gamliel, Shimon Gamliel, Gamliel, Shimon Yehuda, um, Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, and then Hillel Sheni, and that's it, the Nesias was over, Smicha was over, Kiddush HaChaydish was over, and this is like the Chorban, this is like, it's done, it's interesting, like we don't have a date to commemorate it, we don't have anything in the calendar when Eretz Yisrael was done, when Yisrael was over, and it was more or less in the year 350. So 350 is, is what, is 1700 years ago, and um, that's it. Erso was empty and incredible. Erso has been empty for the next uh, 1,500 years. Erso was empty. It, it, was ne it was never the center. We should just appreciate that we're living in a time of like we're living in a time that suddenly Erso woke up again. And, and, and there's something to it. There's something to it. We can't just... We're living through history. We're, we're creating history. We should appreciate it. Okay, so that was Erzal. Some also say that it was such an abrupt end that Talmud Yerushalmi was never gone through and was never sifted through, was never edited, was never clearly really done well, and that's why Talmud Yerushalmi remained so cryptic. Now the Gemara does say in Baba Kama, the Vavam Beis, that Hai Talmud Yerushalmi, who the Talmud Lishna Klila, the Yerushalmis in general would talk Lishna Klila, they would talk in very terse, um, choppy language, and the way they pronounced the words, and the way they would speak their sentences, was not very... Um, was not very slow and very methodical, but it was more choppy and just quick getting to the point, and therefore that's the way Yerushalmi sounds. Not anything. It's not, it's not anything. Uh, I was listening to some Jamaican, I don't know, <laughs> and the, 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 I couldn't even understand what they're saying. I said, what well, language? They said, what do you mean? This is English. I said, English? The mom is speaking English in half, half words. Half words, and that's the way they speak. I mean, it sounds Spanish. Uh, but anyways, I tell you Yerushalmi, but Yesh Lema Oi, that that uh, it was such an abrupt end that Yerushalmi was never gone through, and therefore we're left with a Yerushalmi that first of all was much smaller, it was more or less just for Yerushalmi and Talmidav, and it is, hasn't been edited. Okay. Okay, no, we started later, so we have more time. Here we go. So now, this is what we're about to do now, has changed my life in learning, no question. I have to thank, uh, I have to thank Rabbi Zavi Parnas for this, who learned it from his teacher, and this changed my life in learning. Changed my life. So I beg everyone. Rabbi Dimi and came. They, were, they had like a mission to bring from there to show to bubble. That, that's why they went back and forth. Um, I, I don't know. It, it, was was that was that their mission, or or like or the hack was over there in Bavel, and therefore they always wanted to share what their Rebbe said, and so and hear the huh? So they're going back and forth. They were going back and forth. They, they they were like the conduit, the the, 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 the pipeline. So they were the mission. They're the Sheiros exactly. The Gemara Gittin says that the, at that time there were already Sheiros Mitzurias. Everyone was going back and forth. It was just chaos. I mean, they were on like a mission to bring from right to wrong. Maybe, 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 maybe. No. I think there are Gemara so it talks about people asking Rebbe if they're allowed to go. Or he's sending some and send, not, not sending others and waiting until some are ready. Things like that. So it could be they were sent by the... By, by I hear. I hear. Okay. Uh, where's that Gemara? They the asked Rabbein or Kaddish? Oh, uh, they asked or they... Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it's in Brachas, but I... I, I it's, it's it's it says that he was scared of him because he wanted to go up to Erso or Behuda and, and he didn't want him to go up to Erso. Maybe I, 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 I'm... I'm Remind me. Okay. Okay, great. So now, see, here we go. Well, we have what? Yeah. They changed learning because it changed learning. If if we know this, uh, we'll, we'll get to it. But when I heard it, when I heard what I'm about to say now, uh, it, I said, "Great, wow, beautiful." I did not hazard it, and then I realized how how foolish it was, and I hazarded it, and I hazarded it, and it has changed my world. It has changed my life, and therefore we just have to remember, rush higher or far. We know this, we know everything. Rush, hire, or farm. Just have to remember these words. Not that the words mean anything. Rush, hire, or farm. Now, here we go. Rush, hire, or farm are the generations of, I didn't even mean it, but it's more, no, it's a little, we're out with this. Rush, hire, or farm is as follows. We have, Rush is Rav and Shmuel. So, Rav and Shmuel are, the first generation of Amoraim in Bavel, 
Uh, really, second generation Amorayim, because again, we have that like middle dart that's not so much generation, it's not really so much Amorayim. And Rav and Shmuel. Shmuel was actually in Bavel already before. Shmuel, we have to remember, was in Nahardoi. Nahardoi is already there from the times of Yechonyo. Nahardoi was a much earlier settlement. And Rav showed up. And then when there was a question, who should be Rashiva, Shmuel or Rav? Rav was older, but Shmuel was here first. And Rav told Shmuel that he should be the Rashiva. And Rav left, and Rav went to Suro. So we have Shmuel in the Hardoi, and Rav is in Suro. Halacha ke Rav be Isuri, halacha ke Shmuel bedini. Shmuel is the Dayan. Rav was the Rashiva. Rav was the Rav. Rav was, Shmuel was the Dayan. Shmuel is always the dying in the Mominus, and Halacha ke Shmuel Bedini, ke Rab Isuri, and Rab is in Sura, Shmuel is in Nahardoi, and this is the first generation of Amaroyim, and after Shmuel was lifted, Nahardoi was destroyed in a war, and, 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 and stop, there was... There, there was Chavroi, there was Chavroi, the Gemara talks about the Chavroi that showed up, and these Chavroi were, were, were not so good, and it was uh, interesting for about a hundred years, the first hundred years of Amaroyim in Eretz Yisrael, uh, in Bavel, were, the Parthians were in charge, but then this other kingdom, this Chavroi, took over, and they were much more organized, and they had a much more of a government, therefore, for example, like, Rav Kahanu could kill someone, and the Parthians weren't so on top of the game. Um, the, the power was more or less given over to each, each own city to deal with these things, and, and they weren't so on top of it. Once the Chavroi came, it was a very organized government, they were on top of the game, they would punish anyone who was doing anything wrong, and they were not, they had a bittersweet relationship with the Yidin. The Yidin eventually won over them, and, and, and they worked their way together, but it, in the beginning it wasn't so simple, and then um, these Chavroi people, anyways, um, became bottle and the Parthians took over. So that, that was the, 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 but more or less, bottle was a safe haven for Yidin, and the Yidin were able to deal with the, of the persecutions of Eretz Yisrael, and Bavel, they were more or less safe. And again, Elikin Haven Darka, because Baruch Mamush drew the line of the Christian influence. The Gemara doesn't talk about the Christians so much. <laughs> They were free of the Christian influence. They were in a different world. They were with the, with the Bedouins and the Arabs and the Tayas, right? The Hau Taya, there was a Taya, you know, there was, it was a different, different, different culture. They were more influenced in their to throw from the Europe, from the, from the Romans, and they were more from the Asians. And the line was Mamish, Eretz Yisrael, and Babel, Talmud Babel, Talmud Yerushalmi, and therefore, Incredible how HaKadosh Baruch Hu divided this, this right in the line during this time. So we have Rav and Shmuel. Rav is in Nahardoi. Rav is in Sura. Shmuel is in Nahardoi. Second generation is higher. Let's just go through this. And Mamish higher is Rav Yehuda. Rav Yehuda. And... Whoops. No, that's... Sorry. He is Rav Huna. And Rav Yehuda. So you have Rav Huna and Rav Yehuda were second generations. Ra, Rav Yehuda first learned by Rav. After Rav was lifted, he learned by Shmuel. That's why sometimes the Gemara is Amar Yehuda, Amar Rav. Sometimes the Gemara is Amar Yehuda, Amar Shmuel. And Rav, Rav, Huna, Rav Huna, really after Shmuel, after Shmuel was lifted and Nahardoi was bottled, Rav Huna more or less started Pompadisa. Rav Huna, Rav Yehuda was in Pompadisa, and now Pompadisa became the place. Nahardoi was bottled, rather Nahardoi started over again, but more or less we now have Sura and, and Pompadisa. And Sura and Pompadisa turn out to be the two cities that are going to last for hundreds and hundreds of years, way past the Amaroyim, into the times of the Ga'inim, was always the Rishkalusa, was always the, the leadership, was always Sura and Pompadisa. Sura and Pompadisa were the kings and were the main cities of, of Eretz Yisrael, and this is Mamish in, in Iraq. Uh, this whole place is on the two rivers that go through the Middle East, <coughs> it, which is now goes through Iraq, and that is the Euphrates, the Pras, and the Tigris, the, Tigris, the Chidekel, and those are the two rivers, and they flow into the Persian Gulf. Now it goes even east into Iran, it goes west, 
uh, Turkey and all that, but the center is all in Iraq. That's where Talmud Bavli comes from, is in Iraq. And you have Rav Huna and Rav Yehuda are the second generation. Talking about Omar Rav Yehuda, Omar Rav, or Omar Rav Yehuda, Omar Shmuel, Omar Rav Huna, Omar Rav, Omar Rav Huna, Omar Shmuel, we should just know the Tesis, and Tesis uses this all the time. And this is a life changer in, in Gemara. This Rosh Hayyar farm, with this Tesis, you know everything. And that is as follows. Tesis says, any single time it says, Omar this, Omar that, he was a Talmud who learned by him personally. So Omar this, Omar that, it was a Talmud who learned by him. It could be, otherwise it will say Mishmei this, or Omar this, Mishum that person. He didn't learn by him. But Omar this, Omar that means he was a Talmud of his. He was literally a Talmud. He sat in his yeshiva. So Omar Yehuda, Omar Shmuel, Omar Yehuda, Omar Rav, or any single Gemara, come out every single black Gemara you'll have, one of these people. And then you know where they're holding in uh, are they beginning Amaraim? They, are they end of the Amaraim? And you're always going to have Omar this, Omar that. And who is he speaking with? So you know which generation that other people. And once from there, you, and Tysus does this all the time. We look at history books and know, you know, when did this person live and uh, this. But Tysus didn't have the history books. And Tysus literally sifts out through Shas and says, well, he spoke to him. And he calls him Mar, so it must have been his Rebbe. And Omar this, Omar that, so he was his Rebbe. And, he, and that's how Tesis starts mapping out all the Amarayim. And we just have the end result, and we learn it from here. But again, Rav Shmuel, Rav Huna, and Rav Yehuda. And then we have Rav Yosef and Rabba. Rav Yosef and Rabba were Talmidim of of Rav Huna and Rav Yehuda, and Rav Yosef and Rabba, the Gemara, and the Brachas, who should be Rosh Hashiva, Rabba. Rabba was an Iker Horan Betochen Zuba Zuba Besvara, and Rav Yosef was a Sinai. So Rav Yosef was a Sinai. Rav Yosef was a Saginar. Rav Yosef was blind. Rav Yosef was. Rabbi Yosef knew everything. Knew everything. Everything, everything. He was like Sinai, a bedrock, a mountain. Full of Torah and he was Sinai. But Rabbah, Rabbah was Oiker Harim. He could pick up that Sinai, the Tochnun Zubazubasvar, and he could smash it along. And therefore, who should be Rashiva? Should it be Rabbah? The brisket, the, 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 the. Or should it, I don't want to say the other, you know, the mirror. <laughs> I don't know. Should it should be, who, who should be the Rashiva? And Lamaisa, the Gemara says, really, it should be Rabbi Yosef. But they wanted Rabbah to be Rashiva, and Rabbah was Rashiva for 22 years, and then he was Nifter, and Rabbi Yosef became Rashiva. And. That is the third generation, and then we have Abaya and Rova. Abaya and Rova. Abaya and Rova. Um, we know Rabba, we know Abaye. Um, Abaye was called Rabba Bar Nachmeni. Abaye was sometimes called Nachmeni from Rabba Bar Nachmeni. So Abaye grew up in Rabba's house, and Abaye's Rebbe was Rabbi Yosef, right? Omar le Abaye le Rabbi Yosef, you know, you told it to us. Amrlon, you told us this pshat. So Abaye was by Rabbi and by Rabbi Yosef. Rav also was by Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef, right? The Gemara in Brachas says, Rabbi came out and saw Abaye of Rabbi, little kid, little boys playing, and said, Where's Hashem? He said, Up there. He says, uh, in the sky, because the Maisi said, I know I'm going to be, so therefore, they, they were the next generation. Um, Rava was uh, aided by Rav Chizda, he married Bas Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda is also during this generation, Rav Chizda, and, and Rav Nachman was during this generation, and again, once we have any of these names, we see who they're speaking to, we know who was during this generation. Next, Rava's Talmud was Rav Papa. Sometimes we have things from Rabba, and the Gemara says, Oh, Chadaminai Rav Papa Amro. We have the stira. Could be one of them only came for Rav Papa, and Rav Papa was the next generation. So Rav Papa is really its own generation. Then we have Ravino and Ravashi. They really wrote the Gemara, and Ravashi wrote the Gemara. Ravino came afterwards, and the Gemara says, Seifaira, Ravino Seifaira, Ravino Ravashi is Seifaira, the end of the Gemara. And then Rabbi said, Marba Ravashi. Mar Baravashi squeezed himself into the Gemara as well. Mar Baravashi was a very, very powerful person. A real takif, the Gemara says, Lav kuli Mar, Mar, uh, Mar Baravashi. Not everyone is a Mar Baravashi. Mar Baravashi was very, very powerful, and this is 
the things of the Gemara. Now, Hilal Shini, when he is, it works out here, Hilal Shini, when he was Kaveh, the calendar was more or less in the times of Abaye Varova. So until the times of Abaye Varova, they were still having the calendar I'll be based in, in Eretz Yisrael. Once I buy a Verovo, then that's the Gemara and Bay over there in Haman Bay's with the who says, now we already have Minigav Yisrael Biyadena, we have two days of Yom Tif, and that was during this time that suddenly you can have a calendar and you can know exactly when Rosh Chedesh is going to be, when the next Ibriya is going to be, suddenly everything is. We have, a, who makes up our calendars? You know, you could, you could go online and just like uh, type in when would this day come up and it comes up. Like, who had it all the day, right? In the Torah, the Torah, yeah. the Torah writes that. Mam has the Torah right. Tashim Pegim, he writes exactly how our calendars are. And it comes out, it was really from Hill Hashem, and it came out during the times of Abayi Varav. But again, if we can remember this, we mamish know every single time we have a Gemara, it clicks in. It clicks in, and you're always going to have one of these people on every single Gemara, and you know who's going who, and the order of the Gemara, the order of the Gemara, you never have... Rav Papa talking to Rav Yehuda. If you ever have a Gemara, then Amalei Rav Papa or Rav Yehuda, you know, like, something's very wrong. You're going to see a Tysus right away, and Tysus is going to say, Rav Yehuda, the whole Rav Yehuda was way be Automatically, we're going to hop. There's, there's, no, there's no connection between what's going on, and maybe there were two Rav Papas, maybe there were two Rav Yehudas, maybe this, and the Rav Kahana, there's Rav Kahana talking to him, there's Rav Kahana, there's Rav Kahana talking to Rav Ashi, and there's Rav Kahana who came to uh, there, there, was, there were two Rav Kahanas. Tysus, with that Tysus answers, because it's Masha from one Gemara that he was a Kayan, another Gemara, he was paying Pidyan Aben. So if he's a Kayan, he doesn't pay Pidyan Aben. Then, oh, anyways, we know this two of Kahanas and all this. We can't have Misa. And, like, we have Kohn. We have Kohn that's a Kayan and Kohn that's not a Kayan. So, can we have Kahano? Anyways, once we know who's who and what generation he is, suddenly so many Gemaras come together and it works out um, who. So we have to remember, there's Rav and Shmuel, his first generation. Rush, higher or farm. We, we, we have to remember this for forever. Rush, higher or farm. We have Rav and Shmuel, Rav Huna, Rav Yehuda, Rav Yosef and Rabba, Abaya and Rava, Rav Papa, and Ravina Ravashi, and Mar Bar Rav Ashi. And this is the Seder of the Amarayim. Again, there are many different uh, cities of Amarayim where they live, Masmachasya, and Machuza, and and Hutzel and, and all the different cities where they live, which mo more or less was all on these two rivers and between the two river between the two rivers, and this is the Shtaushlus of the Seda Amaroim in the in Bavel, and then the Seda Amaroim <coughs> of Eretz Yisrael was again Rabbi Yechon of Rishlakish with Rabbi Lodov and Plas of Mar Darbi Yisrael, and then all the Talmidim, and then more or less it ended an abrupt end when the Christians took over, and again in Bavel they were free from the Christians. Then came the Rabbanim Savroi, more or less the 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 the, the Talmud Yerushalmi Eretz Yisrael ended more or less in the year more or less in the year 350, and Talmud Bavli ends more or less in the year 500. So that's when Talmud Yerushalmi, Talmud Bavli ends in the year 500, the Yishev and Eretz ended in the year 350, more or less, the Yerushalmi was written already in the year 250, maybe uh, 300, was more or less finished, but it never really, really, because of the persecution, was never really gone through, and then came the period of the Rabbanon Savroi for another hundred years. They still edited the Gemara, they proofread the Gemara, they added in a little, they sharpened it, they clarified it, and incredible, incredible, what in the world happened from the year 500 to the year 1000? What happened? What happened to the year 500 to the year 1000? If you just drop more, we'll have another 500 years. I'll read Lachas. And what happened from the year 500 to the year 1000? Now, what happened was that you had the Roman, the Roman um, took over. The Roman took over the whole East. The Roman took over the Byzantines. And the Roman Empire, especially the Western Roman Empire, which took over the whole Europe, was so powerful, everything was Roman culture, and the whole thing collapsed. And when the whole thing collapsed, it became a black hole. And everything corroded, and, and lawlessness just took over. And what happened? It's unbelievable. We don't even have records what happened. Now, we don't have any records? No, we have. We have a little here, a little here. We're dealing with 
of 500 years, from the year 500 to the year 1, to the year 0, which is 100 years before the Churban Beis Amidash, we have so many names we could list. So much history went on. So much. We, we, we're, we're so rich in what happened from the year um, 500 before uh, to 0, and from 0 to 500. What about from the year 500 to 1000? And it took no time. We don't know what happened. For a, forget about it. We don't know what happened in the Jewish. In the Jewish, they were Goinim, and there were Rabbonus Avroi, and all these Goinim, Rav Nataroi, Rav Hai, okay, Rav Hai came at the end, and, and, and Rav Shapsoi Goin, and Rav Yehudoi Goin, and we don't know, maybe we have a Sefer from here, and a Sefer from here. Mom is very, very, very little, but even in the whole world, we don't know what happened. What, what happened in the whole world during that time? The Romans um, collapsed and left such a deep hole, and the whole world just went back. You know, they, they have, they have uh, they, they, many people still feel that they found things from the Romans that they started inventing the helicopter, and they started inventing, they started, the, the, you know, life would have advanced. Life would have advanced very, very well and very quickly, but suddenly it just like corroded and collapsed from within, and we're left with this gaping hole of 500 years that whether in our history or whether in the history of the of the Goyim, there was nothing, there was nothing except the, the main, the main, main, main event is that Muhammad came up in the 650s and suddenly he started, he started, uh, he became a prophet and that was all in like Saudi Arabia and Mecca and Medina and he started getting a whole following and he started taking over the world and he probably would have taken over the world and, and it's very possible that that had got the Christians, you know, uh, working again because if they couldn't stop the, the Muslims, then no one's going to stop the Muslims. But now suddenly the Muslims came up from this black hole and the Muslims started putting the pieces together and really challenged everyone. And to undo the Muslims, the Christians got better. And I don't want to say maybe that's the Yid, I don't know. But then eventually the Yidim were all living in Babel for the next 500 years until... Um, Pumpa uh, and Pumpadisa and Sura, they had the Rishkalusa here, the Rishkalusa there, and this, this city was better, that city was better, and then things started getting corroded, and, 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 and the whole civilization of the Ga'inim in Iraq, in Iran, was becoming more and more difficult, and the Arabs were taking over, and the Arabs weren't exactly liking the Yidin. Again, first, Muhammad and the Arabs thought that they could pull in the Yidin and suck the Yidin in and, and try to be, you know, accommodating with the Yidin and the Yidin will, will, will join them. And then when they realize that the Yidin, so many people did the same thing, when they realize that the Yidin are not going to join them, they turned real anti-Semites and it was terrible and, and that's it. And then, and then they just could not there anymore and then they had to move and they traveled, um, e they traveled west all the way to Europe and that really began the period of the Rishonim and the Achreinim. So again, after Avinu Ravashi start, stopped the Gemara another hundred years of the Rabban Savroi and the Rabban Savroi for maybe a hundred years and again we don't even have the names of the Rabban Savroi. Like, it's a pillow. But I'm sorry, we, we have some names. And then the Ga'inim, we have also some names. We have 50 names of Ga'inim. But, but what did they write? What did they do? What was going on? We, we know the jokes that they were, they were saying over in, in the times of Babylon, times of the Gemara. We know, we know the culture. We know the, 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 the refuas that they did then. We know the politics. We know so much going on. And then suddenly we know nothing. We mamish know nothing. Uh, no, it's an incredible, incredible thing. And in the Gaish world also, the, the history books. The history books talk about the Greeks and the Romans. <laughs> and, then, and then it jumps to, you know, the Magna Carta, you know, the, in, in the year 1000. But what happened from the year 500? There's, you know, a few pieces of, of, of history just to put it together and try to figure out. But Kaka, what? What's the relationship? Why is it both the dark and both are? I, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't know, but we can start figuring out. I don't we can start figuring yeah, well, out. Like no, 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 the, the, the Ramban says, no, that the 6,000 years are, are the six days of creation. Which no, so, so, so which part of the 6,000 was that? It was like Thursday night. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know, it was like Thursday afternoon. I, I, I don't know, it was that 500 years was, I, I don't know, it was like empty and like, 
only only the the parasites came out of the emptiness to just chap, and, and that's the whole Arab world and the whole in a Adam. They're like they, they have a whole different. It's not like settled kings and uh, it, it rather is kings, but it's like it's it's, it's, it's a different it's a different culture. Right. I mean, we're, we're more used to the Europe. That's why he calls it okay. But that's more Edom and that's more Yishmo, and that is the years of the Goenim, and the Yidden made it through, and then. They moved east westward to Europe, and that takes the Rishonim in Western Europe and the Chreinim in Eastern Europe. And Ezra Hashem, we have to be Mamshech with, hopefully, on the Rishonim and the Chreinim, Yashir Koyach. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.